Good morning, Bucknutters, and welcome into the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, March 3rd, 2017. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Brandon Castell. b I want to start off talking about Ohio State's wide receiving core entering the 2017 season. You have guys like Ben Victor, K.J. Hill, Austin Mack, Terry McLaurin, Johnny Dixon, all of them. Uh, just what are your thoughts on this group as a whole? Well, I mean, you said a lot of names there, and really not a lot of names that that people who don't follow the team extremely closely and and read the Bucknuts message boards and you know follow recruiting would know. You know, a lot of a lot of the average Ohio State fans, maybe who are outside of Columbus, probably don't know a lot of those names that you just said. You know, so I think that's that's a big piece of the puzzle is can they get some of those guys to step up? And I know we've talked about this in the past, but getting some of the inexperienced guys, um, you know, to, to really grow up in a hurry and to, to start being not just guys who can go out there and run routes and, you know, be the wide receivers who are who are on the field, but actually make plays, actually go out and make plays down the field in the passing game. Um, you know, that's going to be the big question. So to me, wide receivers as a whole, that's a huge question mark for me going into the spring um, one of the biggest question marks on the team is that we didn't really see a whole lot last year, and, you know, you lose Noel Brown, and not that he had a, a monster year. Obviously, he had the big game against Oklahoma, but now you're looking at this group saying, okay, is Austin Mack going to reemerge? You know, we, we heard a ton about him last spring. From what I saw, he looked really good, but then we didn't see him at all during the season. You know, is Paris Campbell going to be an H? Is he going to get the ball? Is he going to, you know, is he going to be a true wide receiver? I think, you know, I've always said, or I've said for a while now that, that Ben Victor and, and K.J. Hill are the two guys that I like the most. Uh, I know Urban has had some some really positive things to say about Victor in, in particular. So that's a kid that I expect to, um, you know, flash in the spring a lot, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if he emerges as kind of the go-to guy. I've had a lot of fans ask about Austin Mack. Like, what was up with Austin Mack not playing a lot as a true freshman? And normally you wouldn't think anything about, you know, even a highly rated guy not playing a lot as a true freshman because we all know it's, really, really hard to play as a true freshman, but there was so much talk about Austin Mack last spring. He enrolled early, um, and when I say talk about Austin Mack, I'm not talking about like message boards, you know, fans on message boards. Coaches at Ohio State were talking him up, including Urban Meyer, and he barely sees the field. So he's a little bit of, a, of an enigma for me, but I'm pretty bullish on him. I, I do think, you know, even though he didn't play as a true freshman like we thought he would after looking good last spring, I still feel like Austin Mack's a guy that can really come of age this year. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I completely agree. You never know what what exactly happens with a kid when he comes in as a, as a freshman. You know, I mean, obviously he came in in the spring. He j- he basically just walked in day one, got into football, was a big part of the you know just just focused on football entirely. And you know, there were a lot of big things being said about him. And I, I know we he looked like a, a really polished route runner. He's got good size. He he, show, he showed good hands. There was a lot to like about Austin Mack in the spring. What happened between then and the start of the season, you know, you never know. He goes into that summer. Now he's a college student. He comes back in the fall. You know, he's there, there's a lot of things that can happen in the classroom, in your personal life. You know, maybe some other guy, he didn't, he didn't do everything he needed to do in terms of the playbook. You know, you never know exactly what causes a guy to kind of slip out of favor. But um, clearly by the time they were halfway through fall camp, you know, they did not feel like he was going to be one of their key guys last year. So um, I, I think that what we heard in, in the spring was probably indicative of, of the potential that this kid has. And, um, you know, going into year two in the program, a lot more opportunity, you know, kind of things are wide open heading into the spring. I would be pretty surprised. I'm with you. I'm, I'm bullish on him. I'd be pretty surprised if he wasn't in the mix and, and a guy that we heard a lot about again this spring. The NFL Combine is, of course, going on right now in Indianapolis. Uh, there will be a total of eight Buckeyes there. Pat Elfline is one of the ones that's already there. He did the bench press yesterday. He will run today. He uh, put up 22 reps of 225 pounds on the bench, which is actually not good for offensive linemen. 
man, it'd be nice to put up uh, 22 reps of 225 pounds and that'd be considered not good. Um, I don't think that's going to hurt Elfline all that much, though. It wasn't like he threw up, like, 15 reps. So um, he would have liked to, I'm sure, do 25 or more, but I don't think that's going to hurt him all that much. Um, looking past Pat Elfline, or you can include him if you want to, like, who are the Buckeyes that you think can really help themselves the most at the Combine, Brandon? Yeah, yeah, great question. You know, I, I agree with you. I don't think Pat Alfline's a guy who's going to really help or hurt himself a lot at the Combine. Um, you know, he, he could have helped himself with a monster showing on the bench, you know, just in terms of overall physicality. Uh, but I, I don't see that being a huge problem. I think he was one of the better centers in the country. Uh, I think a lot of teams are looking for centers who are smart, who are agile, you know, especially in today's NFL. If it was maybe – 10, 20 years ago where you needed that guy to just be a road grader, then, yeah, I think there's maybe some concern. But in today's NFL, you look at some of the guys, um, you know, that are that are really successful at the center position. Oftentimes they're guys who are mobile. They're guys who can who can block a number of different schemes. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't think that will hurt him all that much. A couple guys I think that can have a, a, a big week, um, you know, I look at, at Raekwon McMillan. I think that's a guy that everybody wants to love. You know, I think that um, the NFL obviously has, again, kind of has gone to more of a, a spread-out league, has gone to less of a physical downhill running league, or I think Raekwon would be, um, you know, a lot more a lot more in play and a lot more talked about. But, um, you know, if he shows well, if he runs well, if he moves well, I think that's going to be the big thing with him. Everyone's seen that he can be a physical football player. So I think he's got a big chance this week. And then, uh, you know, obviously I think Curtis Samuel. I think Curtis Samuel's a guy that – um, people saw make huge plays at Ohio State last year, but he only has really one year of experience under his belt. He's only got, you know, one year of, of making plays and being on the big stage. So I think finding out, you know, what kind of physicality, what kind of athleticism does he have, um, you know, he he could fluctuate pretty dramatically. I mean, running backs obviously kind of, um, you know, they, as you get into the second and third round, there's a lot of opportunity for running backs, especially guys who can catch the ball out of the backfield and do a lot of the things that, that Curtis can do. So those two guys, and I, I really think Noah Brown as well, just in terms of how, how he runs. You know, that's going to be the big thing. Is he fast enough to be, um, you know, an NFL caliber receiver? I think that's going to be a big question for, for a lot of the teams who are looking at him. Ohio State spring ball starts Tuesday. Yes, this Tuesday, um, at least a portion of practice will be open to the media in the morning, and we will interview Urban Meyer afterward uh, probably around, Noon or 12.30, sometime around then. We haven't gotten the, the official schedule yet, uh, but I imagine it'll be around noon or 12.30 when we interview Coach Meyer. Um, Brandon, just looking at uh, spring ball as a whole, what intrigues you the most as the Buckeyes enter spring ball? Yeah, I mean, I, well, I think you and I would probably be on the same page here. The thing that intrigues me the most is you're bringing in, you know, Kevin Wilson to run the offense. Um, you're not going to see a big dramatic change probably in, in spring practice day one or week one even, but um, it'll be interesting to see you know what changes come from having a, a guy like that who's been so successful calling the offense, um, you know who really has been brought in to kind of fix uh, a lot of the problems that they had last year in the passing game. So it, a lot of it is going to be okay. He's coming in and inheriting a guy J T Barrett who has been, you know, an all Big Ten performer, but has, you know, also had some issues with passing um, last year and, and and a lot of receivers that haven't done a whole lot. We talked about that already. So I'm interested to see what is going to happen with the passing game. You know, when, with, with Kevin Wilson coming in and Urban Meyer recognizing that that was a big problem for them uh, last year, what is the passing game going to look like? You know, are they going to have the guys? Is there going to be – uh, you know, a little bit different mentality when it comes to, you know, the overall offense. Um, and then, you know, what are some of those young guys like a, a Ben Victor um, going to do, like a J.K. Dobbins? I mean, I'm, I'm interested to see what, you know, those kind of guys can do and, and can they get in there and, and take over and make some plays because, you know, you lose Noah Brown, you lose Curtis Samuel, um, you don't have a lot of playmakers coming back, I mean, in terms of guys who have, who have been successful at this level other than Mike Weber. So, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to me. I'm I'm not worried about the defense. You know, I think they've got guys on that side of the ball. I know they lost uh, a lot of guys in the secondary, but, you know, I think they'll have the guys. I think Greg Schiano will, will have those guys ready to roll. Maybe not at the level that, you know, Hooker and, and Lattimore and Conley played at, but, you know, I think the defense should – should be pretty darn good. It's it's offensively. Can you can you get back to playing the kind of offense you did two three years ago and, and putting up big points? Because 
Um, they can't struggle the way they did offensively last year and, and not be able to pass the ball and, and expect to kind of be able to do bigger things this year than they did last year. Yeah, it's very exciting to think about this offense, as you pointed out, Kevin Wilson um, leading the charge, and just it's going to be fun watching this offense kind of come together under his leadership. Obviously, Urban Meyer is going to be heavily involved with everything uh, regarding the offense, but it is it's really exciting to think about Kevin Wilson taking over as offensive coordinator. Um, let's close the show with some uh, quick basketball talk. Ohio State men's basketball team concludes its regular season schedule tomorrow against Indiana. High noon at the shot will be televised by ESPN. I mean, the Buckeyes, Brandon, are definitely NIT bound unless they can pull off a miracle and win the Big Ten Tournament Championship, but I don't think they can pull off that miracle. Um, but it's always fun beating Indiana. That's kind of when I was growing up, that was kind of the rivalry with basketball, at least in my mind. It was Ohio State, Indiana. It's just, that always felt like the big game, and um, this is the one time they're playing this year. So hopefully the Buckeyes can take care of business tomorrow and, uh, and, and get a big win on a Mark Loving night, or Mark Loving day, I should say. <laughs> Yeah, Mark Loving Day. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think Ohio State fans always always enjoy, obviously, beating Michigan at anything. And then, you know, Michigan State and Wisconsin have been big rivals in, in basketball and in football, really, for the last, uh, you know, decade. But um, there's always something nice about beating Indiana, going back to kind of the, the old days with Bob Knight and, and uh, just kind of the way that they view themselves as a basketball powerhouse and, um, the crazy thing, though, is is where they're at right now. I mean, they're, Indiana is, is 11th in the Big Ten. They're 16 and 14. Um, you know, they've lost, I think, six out of their last seven games. So Tom Green's kind of in a world of hurt right now. I know there's a lot of people in the state of Indiana who are hoping that maybe this could be the the knockout punch for Tom Green. So that would be uh, that would be pretty big if if Ohio State were to go go in and, and uh, to, um, go in and, and, and do that and take them out and uh, maybe not necessarily facilitate but uh, contribute to maybe the exodus of, uh, of Tom Crean, although I don't, I'm not sure Ohio State fans want to see him go. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's been a, a crazy season. <laughs> it's been a crazy season, though. I mean, if you look at kind of the ups and downs for this team. So I, I, I'm with you. You know, I think they're NIT bound. I don't see them winning the Big Ten championship in the tournament. Um, but, you know, the – they, they're coming off back-to-back wins against Wisconsin and then that, that last second or last three-second win against Penn State. So, uh, you know, they, they, they'll rise up and surprise you just when you think they're dead, when they're down for the count. But, um, you know, I, I don't expect much to come out of even if Even if they win this game against Indiana, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Great insights, as always, from my man Brandon Castell. Thank you very much, Bcast, and thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. I hope you have a great day and a great weekend. Let's hear some Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Buckeye, 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 Buckeye.